come to you this hour asking for blessing and help us as we got it together in this webinar. We pray for your guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you will clearly show us how to conduct our work in online business learning with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm despite this enormous. Give us the desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us to work together and encourage each other towards excellence. We ask that we motivate and inspire each other on what we share today to reach higher and farther to the best we can, even amidst these challenging times. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our fifth series, uh, Dr. Mariano Lau webinar on online uh, distance teaching and learning. So I am Oriel Lisa Maipa, your moderator for this afternoon's webinar. So this afternoon's webinar is all about a synchronous delivery, and we have two uh, wonderful educators from Bicol University, Open University, and from Seliman University. So to welcome each and every one of you, may I call on Dr. Dave Marshall. Hello. And uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome to our fifth uh, webinar series of Dr. Mariano Lau. Uh, webinar series on online distance uh, teaching and learning. Today is the fifth uh, Saturday of our preparation for the upcoming new normal of teaching upcoming uh, August um, August um, semester. As mentioned by Lisa, we will be hearing once again another two um, speakers for this afternoon who will share uh, with us, their experiences, some principles, practices in relation to online distance teaching and learning, particularly on asynchronous um, learning. And uh, we hope that we hope that uh, you will learn a lot, which I know you will learn a lot from our speakers because um, they can really. Uh, share and illustrate with us their experiences and best practices as to their online uh, distance teaching and learning. And uh, before I will turn over the screen to our first speaker, let me uh, just give my appreciation and hi to all the people as of the moment we have 44 attendees. There are familiar names uh, on the list, in the list of attendees. Uh, hi to our previous speaker, Sir Manaay. Thank you for joining once again. And uh, Sir Herbert uh, Corpus uh, of AUDRN. Sir, um, AUDRN misses you a lot. We have we have familiar another uh, Doctor Naranjo, welcome, and of course our um, OI director. Um, we have Doctor Gula Torres, and oh, it's nice to see uh, Sister Mary here. Welcome and uh, good afternoon to you. We also have from the Divinity School of Seliman University. We have Dr. Um, Waddington here and the rest of our colleagues in the Department of Education uh, from the higher education institutions in the Philippines and perhaps uh, whatever you are located or situated, situated today. And I hope you are fine in having and listening in our uh, webinars uh, this after webinar this afternoon. Last week it was really an enriching um, webinar. 
And uh, we just actually finished also our webinar together with our partner um, organization on the four walls, beyond the four walls of the classrooms. We talked about uh, specifically on, on the integration of uh, the use of LMS, the learning management system in, uh, in the teaching and learning. And uh, we hope that uh, in, in for, for this afternoon, we were able to, to digest once again and uh, uh, get some tips uh, in relation to our asynchronous learning uh, discussion. Let me introduce to you our first speaker in, in today's or in this afternoon's webinar. Our speaker for this afternoon is uh, from Bicol University and uh, she is the coordinator, the graduate coordinator of uh, of the Bicol Open University, and uh, let me open. Let me open um, her slide because she's having a technical uh, challenges right now, and uh, our, as I mentioned, our our first speaker is coming from Bicol University. She is a graduate of PhD in Extension Education, a minor in Environmental Studies in the University of the Philippines, uh, Los Banos. Uh, she's actually a professor, as I mentioned, in Bicol University, Open University, and uh, she's been uh, teaching at the Open University. Open University is obviously the open, uh, it's, it's a, a full online delivery, I guess, in, in Bicol University. Uh, aside from the, uh, her teaching experience in online teaching, uh, she's also teaching in the residential program of the same university. And uh, her teaching specialization focuses on research methods, structure and processes in organization, uh, problem solving and decision making, and some courses in organization management, supervision, and leadership. Friends, um, let me turn over to you the screen and I hope um, she is ready by this time. Our first speaker is a professor from Bicol University, Open University, and a graduate school professor, um, Dr. Maria Jane Mascarinias. Doc Mascarinias, the screen is yours now. Mom Jane? Mom Jane? So I think um, she is uh, disconnected as of the moment and uh, I hope she could come back in a little while. And uh, Dr. Jane, are you there? Dr. Jane? Jane. So since uh, she's out, but I think uh, I, j just to give a context of asynchronous learning, asynchronous refers to a kind of delivery wherein uh, teachers and students uh, don't need to meet at one time, meaning students can just uh, go in, can hop in into the virtual classroom and perform the activities and perform the activities uh, at their own time, at their own pacing, which is actually opposite to opposite to the opposite to the, the synchronous or the real time activity. When we talk about when we talk about synchronous, which is uh, today's discussion, 
it doesn't mean that it is only referring to video conference. There are many virtual classroom activities that uh, that um, that will illustrate or emphasize on the the asynchronity of a particular delivery in the teaching and learning. And uh, when we talk about asynchronous, um, that is actually a very challenging uh, activity because that is where uh, interaction and feedbacking is a challenge. Let me check if uh, Doc Jane is here already in Zoom. Um, Doc Jane, can I uh, turn over the screen to you now? Uh, this is actually um, what we have to consider also in managing a webinar like this because at any time our internet connectivity uh, may not cooperate and uh, what if we will just tweet our and, and change our speaker uh, so that uh, we can we can proceed with our discussion right now. Yes, yeah, so uh, basically this, uh, as what Dr. Dave Marshall said, this usually happens uh, during live um, broadcast. So uh, we'll see if, uh, will it be okay if um, Miss D will come first? Because I, as I can see here, I think doc, um, Dr. Mascarinias uh, was indeed disconnected. But we'll have to ask first for um, um, Miss Joy D if um, you're already ready. Okay, so um, we will have uh, Miss Joy D first before uh, anything else, let me introduce you to her. So she has been teaching in the tertiary level since July of 2001 and handled programming courses like C, C++ and Java uh, web programming, networking, and educational technology courses. Currently, she is the OIC Dean of the College of Computer Studies and previously the chairperson of the Information Technology Department of the Computer, uh, College of Computer Studies. Uh, she has a bachelor's degree from Silliman University and a master's degree from the universe, uh, from uh, University of Cebu. She is also uh, a Microsoft Educator Ambassador, Philippine Software Industry Association Certified Java Trainer, a TESDA Trainer Methodology Certificate One Holder, and a research assistant of the project Integrating Augmented Reality and Gamification as pedagogies in Silliman University. And lastly, she's also a member of the Philippine E-Learning Society, Philippine Society of Information Technology Educators, Region 7. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome uh, Ms. Joy M. D. Hello, uh, wait, ha, I'm still setting up. Uh, wait, um, Um, good afternoon. Um, 
I'm pressured more now that I'll be the one to start. So uh, wait, let me share my... Okay. Can you see now the slides? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Um, I hope I'll be able to, I know, because supposedly I will be uh, speaking after Dr. Jane, who will be sharing to each one of you um, the concepts. So, good afternoon once again. Um, um, excuse me, Ma'am Joy. Uh, sir? Let, uh -oh. Let's check with uh, Doc Jane because uh, she's, uh, she's around already. I mean, uh, she's in, in the uh, room. Okay, so. Uh, uh, Doc Jane. I'll stop share, sir. Uh-oh. -uh. Doc Jane. Ah, she's around. Hi, sorry for this. <laughs> okay. Sila magda. Yes, hi, uh, hi, Doc Jane. Good afternoon. So you may now uh, begin. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, for this afternoon, this webinar, I am assigned to talk about synchronous learning. Um, And
ay hindi na receive. Uh, so everyone, uh, we seem to have uh, um, some technical issues. So for the for those who just uh, tuned in, you are watching our uh, fifth series on uh, Dr. Mariana Lau webinar on online distance teaching and learning. So this afternoon's um, uh, topic is about a synchronous delivery, and we have here our speakers, Dr. Mariana Jane Mascarinas and Assistant Professor Joy MD. So uh, let's wait for a short while for uh, Doc Mascarinas to have her slides um, shared to our screen. Okay, so um, uh, since Doc Mascarinas is still having some difficulties, uh, technical difficulties, so let's uh, proceed to our uh, second speaker, Assistant Professor uh, Joy M.D. Hello, Liz. So I need to start now. Yes, please. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, let me add my slides. Okay. That's really usual. Ah, this is the final, lah. <laughs> wait, Saha, wait, wait. Yes, okay, that's okay. <laughs> there, go ahead, Mom Joy. Ah, uh, okay. Um, I'll share my screen. Wait. Is everything good, Liz, on your end? Yes, go ahead. All is good. Okay. So I think this is really usually good afternoon once again. And I think this is um, something that is normal with virtual seminars. Like what is the um, the in thing right now with the COVID pandemic? So I think I should start um, because I think the weather is not also cooperating with mom who's quite far from all of us. So this afternoon, um, my talk or what I'm aside to discuss to all of you is not really on the concept. So um, that is Dr. Jane will talk about more on that. So what I will share to each one of you is my experience with my soul synchronous delivery. So my experience, the learnings I had and how we could move forward. So like what we should do if we're going to include synchronous um, activities in our virtual classroom. Okay. So let me start first with my experience. Now, um, prior to the soul that we have, in, uh, we are enjoying right now in Silliman University, before this, before it was like um, under Blackboard or the open LMS, um, I, I was already using the old soul in our educational technology classes and in some of my major subject classes. Of course, the interface that we are enjoying right now 
it's not um, without with our old one it's not the same as um, what we have so that's why you might be wondering why only in this particular slide of mine it's only 2019 now this is the new look the new interface of the my soul which is already um backed up by open uh, blackboard which is now open lms since blackboard is bought by open lms so it does not mean to say that i've been using this platform for since 2019 only i've been using this way before um since i started working in Siliman university but it's only in 2019 that the look is like this so even if I've been using this ever since I started working in Silliman University, I wasn't able to use this like the context that we are in right now. So previously, I have like what you can see here on my screen. These are all the subjects that I have handled last school year, first um, semester. But during that semester, COVID wasn't there. So all our classes were conducted face to face. So my soul, is used for um, uh, as a medium or a platform for us to share materials to our students and at the same time um, convert our written exams to online but still the online exam is not the same as the online that we are having right now okay so if you try to take a look here this is a sample um, outline or contents of my course last year so as you can see here, it's divided into topics. Um, very few because micro learning wasn't the in thing that time. So as you can see, I have the course overview, then the, um, this one, and then final requirements. So there are four main topics, and in each of this, there are subtopics within. So as you can see, you could not see any video conference or chat section. Because at this point in time, my soul was used to supplement the face-to-face -face activities. So, but of course, um, because of COVID, we have to make the shift. So, I've been using soul um, as a platform for me to be able to share materials, uh, though I have used flip learning already that time. But it's totally different when there was um, when we need to shift come summer, last summer. So it is because of COVID that from a face-to-face -face class, we need to um, shift to online distance teaching and learning. Back then, before the start of summer class, when we were told that the mode of class delivery will be pure online or online distance learning, I was quite confident. Because like I, 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 I told myself, anyway, I've been using Seoul. So maybe, but not realizing that um, when you talk about ODL, there really is a difference in using Seoul as a, in a face-to-face -face class and ODL. But before the summer class starts, I was quite confident, knowing that I've been handling also like um, ed tech classes. And then, so there was the, fa um, the shift that we need to go uh, or we need to do last summer and that is because of COVID-19 so we need to adapt to the new normal so during summer um, there were two classes that I offered full online and these are all major subjects in the um, information technology program one is CCS3 and the other one is Infotech 26 this third one here was offered mid-year. So when I was preparing for my class, all I did then was simply transfer all the materials I had in my previous classes without really thinking that if you talk about ODL, there is what, though I know that in, in concept, there is asynchronous and synchronous because I am quite familiar of the concept in my educational technology classes. But experience-wise, last summer was really my first time. So if you talk about synchronous activities in online courses, the main thing there is the word schedule. So if you talk about synchronous, you, the teacher, and your students will meet online at the same time. 
So for that to happen, a specific schedule should be set in place ahead of time. So synchronous activities that I have used in my class are the following. Um, scheduled quizzes and tests, scheduled chat rooms, scheduled video conference, and of course, live stream lectures or demonstrations. So why did I choose this for? Though there are a lot of other um, synchronous activities that we could add to our class, but knowing the shift from face-to-face -to, -face to the synchronous, I was thinking that these are the activities that could somehow supplement what would be lacking from my asynchronous activities. So when we were asked to um, deliver our classes full online last summer, I was already thinking of how to do it. Like there's flip learning and then, so it's a combination of asynchronous and synchronous, flip learning and micro learning. So to convert my syllabus into ODL, it's a combination of um, asynchronous and synchronous. So for the synchronous, these are the four activities that I added to my classes. So I know the concept, but experience-wise, honestly, this is my first time. Okay, so if you talk about synchronous activities being scheduled, it's very important that you make your students aware and so that also they could prepare for such scheduled activity. So the thing here is, it is scheduled. So since it is scheduled, it is very important that we make prior announcements to our students. So it's lucky for us in Silliman University because my soul is already everything. Um, it's an all-in-one platform. So this is, um, I made use of open forum to uh, make my announcements. Why open forum? So that students could also like give their, leave their feedback. Like they, they, they could tell me um, we have a scheduled run out at this particular time or I'm having difficulty with internet connectivity. So with open forum, the students could also make a reply to announcements that I made. So for me to establish the expected scheduled activities of our students, I made use of announcements. And I have here an example. This is for my April 20 class. So I usually, now in Silima, or like maybe it's the same in any other um, schools, if you talk about summer, it's a daily class. So I'm handling a three unit, but it's a lab club class. So it's like um, in a normal semester, it's five hours per week. But during summer, I need to meet them every day for three hours. So you have to imagine if my thinking then was, oh, it's just easy. I'll just convert the face-to-face -face lecture by meeting them online. So I usually would make an announcement like, days ahead it's not actually a week because i wasn't really able to um, plan right away everything because it was like quick um here in dumaguete we experienced the the ecq in april which is also about the same time that the summer classes will start so we were notified that for our summer classes to go on we need to um deliver it fully online so like for example in this announcement that i have here is for my April 20 class. So usually my lead time in making that announcement is like three or a minimum of three or more days. So this is in such a way that students would know what they have to do for that particular day. And in this case, our, we will have an online discussion. So if you try to take a look at my um, sample here, I gave them instructions and what is that specific, when are these online activities will happen. So we're going to have an online discussion at exactly 1.30 p.m. And the platform that we're going to use is Big Blue Button. So in other words, when you make the announcement, it should be ahead because we are going to do a scheduled activity. Now, when I, um, during summer, if you're going to compare with my previous, um, the previous slide where I showed my course in networking, these sections were added. Now, these sections were added so that it will be easy for my students to know where to go to whenever we do synchronous activities. 
So as I mentioned earlier, there are four that I had applied in my summer classes. The scheduled quiz, and then we have the scheduled chat room, and the very common and usually our notion, if you talk about synchronous, the video conference or online or live stream discussion. So I'm using Google Meet, uh, Big Blue Button, and there is the chat or the question and answer. You might be wondering why Zoom is not included here, especially I've seen in the participants that there are um, participants from Silliman University. Um, I did not use Zoom at this time, though Zoom is um, supported by my soul right now because during this time, there were the security issues raised with Zoom. So I opted not to include it in my virtual class last summer. So this area here, is one set, or this area is what is added to my previous, which is what? To cater to synchronous activities. So I, what I have next here is, so whenever you're going to give scheduled quizzes and tests, of course you have to make the announcement. Students should know when will it happen, what they need to prepare in terms of the platform that they need to use, and of course, what is what or what is or are the topics included in the um, scheduled quiz and test? So if we talk about quizzes and tests, we could also conduct this asynchronously. But the quiz and test I'm talking here is like us giving a major exam in a classroom, wherein we we look at our or we um, watch our students when they are we are there proctoring our students or like um, taking note what they are doing during the exam. So for the announcement, I added here, when will it happen? What's the coverage? And since I have big blue button and Google Meet for a video conference platform, I also specified where they need to go. Now here is an example of, this is an actual exam that we did. So as you can see with Google Meet, um, you have here, this is like, I would you normally ask my students to share their screen. So for scheduled quizzes and tests, I normally create the announcement and then during the exam itself, we have things to do also like pre-exam activities, during the exam activities, and after the exam activities. So what is asynchronous in those three settings? Of course, the pre and the during the exam is what we could consider synchronous. The post-exam normally, that's the time when the students will leave and we finalize the scores. If there is still options or items in, your, in our exam that needs to be manually graded. So since the exam is conducted synchronously, there is of course a need to also provide feedback um, right away. So as you can see here, this is a sample, um, this is like the actual exam that my students took and this is First, before I was, this is my first time in giving them. As you can see, their mics are all muted, which should not be the case. So I asked them to mute it because they're some of them, the background is too noisy. And of course, when they, if we talk about conducting an exam, the, the setting should be conducive. So when it was my first time to give a scheduled test to my students, I asked them to mute their background which should not be the case. So these are all my students and I would take a close look at each one of them, especially for their gestures, like their eye contact, their hand movement, and like the facial expression. So if I find a particular student kind of suspicious, I would normally ask the student to present his or her screen, just like in this case. So this is a, um, a student screen. And you could see here, who is that specific student presenting in? So this is how a scheduled quiz or test is done um, synchronously or delivered synchronously. Of course, um, if you talk about ODL, we also have a synchronous um, activity. So be, um, in my class, it's like um, I complement these two sets of activities. So I have, um, Flip learning, I usually do flip learning for the asynchronous activities. 
So usually I would give materials for my students to like study and get an overview of what the new lesson is all about. And since um, my subjects were all programming, I would usually give them and let them do the sample programs and provide them like videos and other materials that they need to learn ahead of time prior to our um, synchronous or like discussion. But the scheduled chat room time, I usually do this when my students are doing their laboratory or programming exercises. So this is an example of what I did with chat. So of course, I need to make an announcement. So why is it very important again to make an announcement just like with a scheduled test? Because it's scheduled. You, we want, or I want my students to be all together there at that particular point in time. So that's why I, I make an announcement in the, using an open forum so that if they have like difficulties prior to the schedule, they could always inform me. Also, it's another way for the students to get prepared for this particular scheduled activity. So what happened here, um, we have announcements. So, Okay, so what happens here, like for this is a sample of my scheduled chat. Um, wait, something happened. Okay, sorry for the, I know. Okay, to continue, um, regarding scheduled chat room time. So you have here, since it's scheduled again, it's very important or making the announcement is vital. So my announcement here is all about the programming exercise for lessons two and three. So um, since I embedded micro learning, when you talk about lessons, it could be like a, a big one. So let's chunks of a big one. So I have here, you will be doing your programming exercises today, one programming exercise for each lesson. Feel free to chat with me through the question and answer section. What makes this synchronous? We have a schedule to follow during our summer classes. So for example, for this class, it's a 1.30 to 4.30 p.m. class. In other words, I would want my students to work on their programming exercise during our scheduled time. So that makes it synchronous. So another thing, of course, they will be doing it in their respective homes. So how will they be able to communicate with me? So that's why I am providing them that chat section for question and answer. So this is um, where the students, while they're doing their activities, they could ask me questions or clarification regarding the programming exercise that I have given them. But again, before the actual, of course, the announcement should be made at least three days ahead. So this are example um, chat sessions that I had with my student. So for example here, the first one here is last uh, Friday, April 17. Um, the student was, um, the, the, so during this time, the students already know that if ever they encounter difficulties, they could always go to the chat section. And then they have to ask their questions there. So here, um, as you can see, never mind the di dialect because um, during summer, of course, the students are free to um, communicate with me in whichever dialect they're comfortable um, to use. So it's, in this case, is it in Cebuano? Because maybe we do have participants here or not Cebuano or Bisaya. So the student is asking me, so he said like, naan na jud ko'y pangutana. So the student is asking me here about the second exercise. So this is an example, but in this case, is the student communicating with me. So this, um, the chat room could not only be limited to this student asking me questions. We could also make use of the chat room to let students interact with each other. Now this one here is another example wherein the student was asking me about, or um, he has clarifications with a particular programming exercise that I, I gave in class. So what is good with chat room 
it is um if you talk about internet connectivity it is not as consuming as a video or live discussion now why i why do i make use of this one whenever my students are doing their programming exercises because it's just like in a face-to-face -face class when they are working or doing their programming exercises we are around facilitators to um, entertain them whenever they have questions or clarifications but that could not be done anymore with ODL. So since our students are far away from us, we are not in a single classroom, I made use of the chat room for them to be able to ask questions or clarifications whenever I gave them programming exercises. Okay, now I think I share the same notion with most of you. For me before, if you talk about synchronous delivery, what usually comes first into my mind is video conference or live stream demonstration or lecture. Now, of all the like the scheduled test, the scheduled chat, the, schedule, the video conference and the live stream discussion or lecture is one that will really take up much of that you really need a stable internet connectivity. Now, we all know that in the Philippines, um, it's still a challenge, or not really like a challenge, but a problem. So for scheduled at the uh, video conference, again, make an announcement. So just like with scheduled test, um, scheduled chat, you have to announce when are you going to hold or conduct such video conference or live stream discussion. So here, I made an announcement and in my announcement, I have specified here the platform. If you remember, I have Google Meet and I have Big Blue Button and there's chat. So I'm, um, I specified in my announcement where the students should go. So I have here Big Blue Button meeting at 2 p.m. So I also tell them to prepare what, what we'll be talking about. So in this case, please note the main differences with the two swap programs given yesterday for later's discussion. So the, the yesterday I'm referring to here is the flip learning. So prior, um, per my experience last summer, before I do um, video conference or live stream discussion, I usually give them materials to study ahead. So I, I use flip, then after that, to, um, for knowledge deepening, this is where we do the on uh, video conference or live stream discussion. This is another example. I have here the announcement again. Let's meet in big blue button at 1.30 p.m. for our lesson discussion. What you have here is when this would happen. So like for our April 23 class, this is what we are going to do. In this way, especially that is video conference, it's very important that students really know ahead of time so that they could also prepare. And these are um, examples. Um, this is a screenshot of. Actually, I was excited. Uh, the, um, I was excited um, as I go on with my um, summer classes. I was excited at the same time as I go along. I felt the pressure. It's like, am I doing the right thing? So, um, normally I take a picture, like for documentation, say because it's the first time that everything is done here online. So this is an example of um, a video conference or a live stream discussion using Big Blue Button. So why um, I, I mentioned that I'm using Google Meet and Big Blue Button. So you might be asking me, why Big Blue Button? Why not Google Meet? Um, I'm handling programming classes. And I think in the, the start of my talk, I mentioned that I, my, my thinking was it's just easy. I just convert my face-to-face -face discussion to video conference discussion without knowing that should not take place or that should not be the case in an ODL delivery. So I made use of Big Blue Button for these three reasons. So these are my, I had eight students in this particular class, so you can see them. Um, and it's quite funny when you do video discussion, I did not require them to wear um, any formal outfit or what. I just let them come as they are. Just like in our, because in the college we don't have, or like in Siliman, 
we are one of the units we don't have a, um, a uniform so we don't really require our students to wear anything or they don't have a uniform to wear when they come to class so i was doing the same thing with my virtual class plus summer so as you can see um, if you try to take a look at my students um they're all wearing house clothes and including myself okay so we are that convertible again at this point in time um what my thinking then was i'm doing the right thing but after i have attended a lot of webinars lately and attending talks i have realized that there are really some things that i need to improve so going back to big blue button why i chose this for my live stream discussions or online discussion over google meet are for these three main reasons there is a poll um you could do breakout sessions so like you could group your students and let them do learning activities as a group. And of course, this is what I've been using uh, most of the time during my video conference or live stream discussion, the multi-user whiteboard. Because if you remember, my notion was, oh, it's just, it would just be easy. What I would usually do in class writing on the whiteboard, I could just convert it using big blue button. So that's why I really love this uh, feature of this, um, this application. So there's the multi-user whiteboard. I couldn't turn it on and then my students could also write on it. So if you try to take a look at the faces of my students here, um, I could say maybe they were also like enjoying our um, live stream discussion or video conference. Okay, so um, I have shared with you the activities that I did for my ODL summer classes. I also did mention that prior to doing that last summer, I was using my soul as a platform so um, to augment my face-to-face -face class. So I have um, this particular slide. Let me share to you, or it's a comparison of um, how I used my soul before and after or during COVID. So during the face-to-face, -face, I mainly make use of my soul for platform as a platform to share class materials to my students. So if you talk about class materials, this includes my PowerPoint slides, um, video materials that or links to other materials that they need to study to prepare them for the lesson. Because um, even if it's face to face, since we do have the my soul already, I was already using flipped learning. So when they come to class, we could maximize our time doing the activities na. So we won't be wasting any more like lectures and everything. Not really waste, but we will not be using time anymore to, so um, for discussion. So in such a way, when we meet in class during the face-to-face, -face, we could maximize our time to application. So here, if you try to take a look at my contents, you could not see what I have here in the other one. So for my summer ODL classes, I already have, I have separated the exams and the quizzes, the Google Meet discussions, Big Blue Button discussions, and chat question and answer. So if you're going to take a look here, I use um, my soul as a platform for sharing my class materials, for flip learning, and to convert um written exams to online quizzes and exam that is my utilization of my soul that time but when i was asked to handle subjects programming or major subjects last summer which we need to deliver full online this is now what i need to take in mind or consider how am i going to lay out my asynchronous and synchronous activities i applied flip learning and at the same time, so that it will not be that um, stressful for students because we have to also consider that April to May is like the peak of COVID in the Philippines. And even our city here, we, in, uh, we experienced the ACQ. So um, when I was like preparing for my class that time, of course, who would not be stressed with um, the pandemic? So I now added micro learning so that students will not be that stressed looking at the materials learning the materials so if you try to take a look here my um, synchronous activities come here um, i separated though here 
I already make use of online exam, but these are online exams conducted in the classroom with me physically with the students. So I transferred it here because these are four exams that could both asynchronous and synchronous. And this last three sections here, this is now for the um, video discussion, the chat room, and so on, like the ones I mentioned a while ago. Now, I was, um, okay. I also was able to experience, so that is my sharing um, as a faculty that was able to handle classes, or my experience if, uh, being able to handle classes um, here online last summer. Now, June, uh, just last month, I was also able to experience uh, being a parent to my son, whom I enrolled with the BIM program in Siliman. So, of course, when your role shift, your perspective towards synchronous delivery also will shift. So, I will share you um, some shots. So, this is my son's name. And this is, he was, I enrolled him in primary English. So, um, I did mention that if you talk about synchronous delivery, it's scheduled. So, I was also like, I realized at this point in time, since this the class of my son, the BIM class of my son was conducted July to, um, July 1 to August, uh, they were closed on Monday. I already realized my mistakes. I have realized the, my shortcomings in my ODL classes um, last summer. So I was also curious at the same time how the, um, the SBE teacher is going to handle it. Because one thing, it's a different age group. So I was curious how they will, how they're going to do synchronous and asynchronous activity. I was curious how they're going to conduct or deliver synchronous activity. So this is the, the, the home and then here. I did mention that as, um, as an instructor, do, uh, making announcement about our synchronous activities is very important. So here, um, this is what they did in my, um, in, this is what happened in my class, English class, in my son's English class. Under the announcements section, um, it's separated into two. There are, um, we have the synchronous sessions and the asynchronous session. Now, you might be saying that too much screen time. No, of course not. We have to consider that this class is intended for six or seven year old students. Now, when I had my class last summer, that class is intended for tertiary level students. So you could see the difference here. Um, I would like to commend the teacher um, of my son. If you try to take a look here, it's very colorful, very appropriate for um, a seven year old learner. So of course I need to be there for my son while he's doing his online class. So with a synchronous activity, we are well guided with a schedule. So we have here what we need to do at a specific point in time. So his class is from 9.30 to 11. So for, as you can see, it's very well outlined here, which is a key or which is a vital info that we should do whenever we include as, um, synchronous activities in our classroom. And then, so, it's really clear that this is what we have to do for synchronous and what we need to do for asynchronous. And if you talk about daily, because scheduling or no, letting your students know about the scheduled synchronous activity is very important. If you try to take a look here, it's very informative. So this is the contents of my son's class. Just like mine, there is a specific section for synchronous activity here. So they have a video conference room. In my case, I segregated it into Google Meet discussion, Big Blue Button discussion, and chat. Um, of course, I would understand why there's no chat yet here. There's no chat section. So it, could, it is considered as one of a synchronous um, activity that you could deliver in your ODL class. Of course, we're talking here of seven-year-old, like incoming grade two students. So they're not really into chatting like the tertiary level students yet. But of course, since they are young, they need to meet three times a week. For me as a parent, I am well guided with the schedule. So I know ahead in time what I should prepare 
and also um, I could mindset my son like tomorrow or oh, you have to you could see a teacher which is usually excited to do with so in this case since the schedule is announced way ahead now in this particular class their schedule is given one week before like prior to um, the week before that this week's class so as you can see here if you are a parent you are well guided because i am the one who's going to also guide my son so while doing this if um i somehow realized that it's really is very important that plan we plan ahead our synchronous activity so in this case me as the parent who's going to guide my son in doing it i could also like prepare ahead of time okay so i think that's it for my learnings i uh, know my share uh, my experience as um a faculty handling an odl class and as a parent whose son was able to experience an online distance learning another thing um i have watched my son um, they're also using big blue button one thing i have noticed um, that is most challenging among all the participants or the students in the beam class or like in specifically in my son's class is internet connectivity there was one time they're doing their dance it's like their teacher was like showing a video where all of them is going to um, follow the dance step i could not forget this one because the student asked the teacher why is that why does the teacher kept on pausing the video which in fact if like in my field i understand that it's due to internet connectivity because the others, the other students, they were doing fine, but that specific student, it's like static. Um, though he is on, uh, she is, she, it, it was a she, she was online, but it's like a still image. So when, the, when that student asked, that's one thing I realized, um, internet connectivity is also very important if you talk about video conference. So, but, I know they want to use it in moderation, but knowing the age level, they have to do it three times a week. Okay, learnings. Um, I think when I shared about the activities that I applied or used in my ODL class last summer and mid-year, I already mentioned that I learned a lot of things. Um, I realized that there were some strategy, uh, there were um, I, there were some things that I wasn't doing it correctly. Um, according to how it should be done. So these are the four learnings that I had with my ODL um, class experience. Number one, internet connectivity is a challenge. So I, I think this is most of us is experiencing. Um, this one here that I have shown you happened during one of my online um, synchronous or scheduled quiz or exam so while the exam was going on one student of mine because i usually tell them okay um so they have to show their camera and they need to unmute because i've realized that i need to hear what they're doing for me to know uh, to be aware of their other movements and all of a sudden while the exam was going on a student of mine oh the name is here so the student of mine presented so i was like wondering why is he presenting because i just normally ask them to present their screen or share their screen if i find their gestures a bit suspicious so it's like they're trying to do something else that should not be and i was wondering why was he presenting his screen and then i've seen this one network connection loss so the student like panic already what he should do um, are his answers recorded? What should be done? Actually, what happened during this time, I immediately messaged Dr. Marshall. I asked her, Dave, what I should do also. And then um, I realized that this one, because he's the only one who experienced it, his other classmates were doing okay with the online exam. And I realized, because usually when we do video conference, which I was doing every other day during summer which should not be the case um this student usually is like he's not moving or like um his connectivity already was a problem so i was able to when he showed me this particular notification i immediately um 
told him that you need to check your internet connection. But of course, before doing that, I verified first with Dr. Marshall. If it's soul, let's have, if this is soul related, I mean, our LMS, is this LMS related or is this network connectivity related? So when I got the message from Dr. Marshall, I realized that it's internet connectivity related, which also like was my initial um, um, reason or like my idea as to why this was happening to the specific student. Because the day, I mean, two days prior to the exam, when we had our video discussion, he got problem already with audio and video. So internet connectivity is really a challenge. So since I highlighted four, oh no, that's only three, scheduled exam, chat, and uh, video discussion or live stream discussion, this one is the one that really needs a stable internet connection. And knowing that internet connectivity is really a challenge here in the Philippines, that's why um, at Siliman University, we are more geared on do, um, giving more asynchronous activities. And why is that the case? Because we would want to consider um, diversity and we have to also take note that our students will have different internet connectivity. So, um it's an issue there, there, uh, this place might be okay but this student may have an issue so when we do video conference and i've also re um we, we might as well do it like not i've realized at this point in time that i was i should not have done it every other day which was i what we which was what i did last summer because of this particular problem the internet connectivity okay Another is the frequency of video conference or live stream discussions. Initially, before I started summer, I, I wasn't really thinking, uh, what I had in mind was, uh, okay, from the face-to-face -face discussion, I just convert it to this one. But um, as I go along with my classes, and since I have attended other webinars, I've learned this particular mistake. ODL is totally different from the face-to-face -face wherein we could do lectures every day. So we need to consider that, of course, the screen time, it would be too stressful for our students to be sitting in front of the screen the whole day and doing nothing else. It's different from a face-to-face -face class wherein they could move around. We could give them activities that would require them to move from one place to another. But in this particular case, in this particular case, um, we should not also do this frequently because of internet connectivity issues or challenges. So um, during, last summer, I was doing it every other day. Um, there was even a time that I was doing it daily. Like for this particular day, we had a video discussion to deepen the knowledge of that lesson. The following day, we have to Google Meet for the online exam. And then after that, I need to meet them again for overview of the next lesson which should that be the case. Though I said that I was using flip already, I was using flip learning and micro learning, but I wasn't really using it correctly. I, I, I could say that. So it's like, um, it's, that should not be the case. So I wasn't using the, this pedagogy in its full potential. So this is one thing that I've learned during my experience that we should not do it frequently. And um, I have attended the webinar, the very first webinar in Dr. Mariano Lau, um, where the speaker talked about, like, she was from um, UPOU. They only meet their students through video conference once a month. When I heard that, I said to myself, oh my God, I'm doing the writing all along last summer. So I, what was in my mind that time was for me to be able to deliver um, or meet the learning outcomes without considering that it could be too stressful for the students and also without considering the diverse or varied internet connectivity that my students have. My third learning is establish ground rules. Um, even in the face-to-face -face class, I usually start my classes with an orientation in the first day. So during the orientation, that is where they would know about what the, the, the course is all about, the grading system, how they could communicate with me, and what are the classroom policies. Now, since we are doing things ODL, I need to make a shift also with my 
class pa uh, virtual class room policies and one thing that we should really establish and implement are the ground rules for online discussion and this also i have noticed with my son's beam class um they need to do a thumbs up so gestures are very important so if um we could like minimize the time or how long we have to meet our students online for video conference the better because um of course, um, internet connectivity is a challenge. So like here in my class, as you can see this particular student, he's like raising his pen and his hand. So together with my ground rules, th these are the sample ground rules that I um, gave to my student during um, the orientation or the start of our summer ODL class. So they already know that if like during our online discussion and they would want to raise a point, they need to raise their hand. And then, um, so this is an example of the student. Now, as you can see, this one student here, he looks too tired already because during last summer, his class started like 8.30 straight up to my class. So I am the third class for him. So I, I normally would understand what he would look like this. So going back to ground rules, um, I always establish this so that we, we could always um, establish respect here in our virtual class because these students are millennials they're used to doing online discussions in their games or whatever groups they are in so it's better that we should really establish what we expect from them what they could expect from us and how we are going to go through with our um synchronous uh, like with our um online discussion so this is an example i told them if you would want to raise what well, i'm discussing and you would want to raise a point raise your hand that's why this student uh, this student was raising his hand um i have here some of the ground rules or uh, for online discussion i share to them um, i always encourage them to participate help others um, especially in breakout sessions of course we have to respect diversity and this is very important no flaming um i would i stress this one as a very important ground rule because these are millennial students they're used to they're more comfortable um doing this type kind of thing like video calls but um they're into facebook and messenger so they might have that mindset that what we are doing here in our online discussion is just the same as what they do with messenger when they do it with their peers so it's very important that we have to stress this one and of course this is um one thing that i've really learned and realized how to properly do it so online quizzes and test tips now um these are the things that i usually observe before um during and after the exam i did not make any consideration of this because um prior to odl but of course when we do um online or scheduled exam or like synchronous exams is a totally different thing because we are not together just like in a face-to-face -face classroom wherein we could always see our students what they are doing so i think the number one consideration is how we could minimize cheating and i've attended um just this week a webinar that focuses on that so cheating is really one thing that we are always cautious as instructors so this is my ground rules or what I usually do before the exam. So before I am, of course, announce, I announce the exam ahead of time. So my students are prepared to take the exam. And at the same time, they should know what they could expect. So before the exam, I usually ask them to like show me the environment where they are in. So it's like a 360 turn of their environment and lastly i would want them to focus on the working table that way i'll be able to see what they're doing because of course our students they are using their pc or laptop they have their tablet they even have their cell phone so what i usually do in the face-to-face -face, i don't let my students use their cell phones during exam i still do the same thing for the online so prior to the exam i would ask them to keep their phones and show me the environment then after that i discussed to them this is what i learned also during my um uh, my odl class in summer it's very important that students understand 
why the time duration is that much only. Now, in Silliman, we usually give two hours for a midterm and a final exam. We could no longer do that in an ODL class or like in a synchronous exam or in an online exam because that would give ample time for the student to do something else aside from the exam. So that kind of shift should be emphasized to the student, which I did. Because before that, um, I just give the exam and then they had complaints like, why am I getting this, why like that. So I realized it's very important to let them know why the duration is such for this number of items. So as the teacher, um, what we, if you talk about an exam, it's the content that really matters, right? So because we usually give an exam to assess their, um, the knowledge that they have gotten or learned from our lesson. So I explained to them why the duration is such for this particular exam. And then they would ask questions. So I would answer them and then I also tell them the types of tests that they could expect. So it's just like conditioning them prior to the actual online exam. Now, in, in cases wherein I am, I, my students are asked or they are allowed to make use of a scratch paper and pen, I also ask them to show it to me ahead of time. And then after that, um, I ask them to close any other tabs or any other windows that they have open. And then one by one, I ask my student to share their screen. So um, the very first time around, it was really challenging because the internet connectivity, it was like the start of ECQ already. The internet connectivity was really bad and also in my case. So um, it would really take time for each one of your students to present, but I was kind of patient enough because I would want to make sure that um, they're not really opening any other application, especially with programming. It's just very easy for them to like Google search and do or open their um, programming editor and see and do things there. So this particular number, especially this number four, it would really take time if the internet connection of the student is not good because they have to share their screen. Then after that, once I'm done, I ask all of them to stop presenting and then um, I give them the password. So all my online exam um, is with a password so that in case there is a student who's absent, he would be able to take the exam. Um, initially, I give it through the chat option of Google Meet, but I realized what if a student is absent or it's just very easy for them to share the password. So um, after that, because it happened, one student was late to take my exam. I was wondering how he was able to know the password. So um, my, my notion then was maybe that student of mine chatted his classmate already taking the exam for the password. So after that incident, I don't normally chat my password anymore for the quiz, but rather say it verbally. Okay, and I usually make the password quite long so that it will not be easy for them to like remember it and share it to their classmates who are not there on time. Because it also happened, even if I schedule the exam at this specific point in time, they would always say like, I'm having these issues like that. So we have to anticipate that also. Then during the exam, I would usually look closely at each one of them. So I asked them to share their web camera and their audio should not be muted so that I could hear the extra sounds that they are doing. So it's just like when we are conducting our face-to-face -face exam, but we walk around the classroom and then we try to go near a student that we um, think is doing something suspicious, is not or something that is not normal anymore or could be done together with um, while taking the exam. So for virtual, it's quite um, a challenge. Like it was lucky for me last summer because I only had like eight students. So I made use of Google Meet for exams because um, the grid view is, it's nice, um, it's like big sha, and then it's easy for me to observe them. And also with Google Meet, I could record it and the recording won't be lost just like in Big Blue Button. So I use Big Blue Button for discussions, but the recordings there would only stay like for like a week or so. And like in the test, the, um, for test, I would want to keep the recording in case a student is caught cheating. 
that would be my proof already. So I decided to make use of Google Meet because the recordings will be, um, the recordings will just stay in my Google Drive. So whenever I find a specific, during the exam, whenever I could, like the gesture of the student is quite suspicious, I would ask them to share their screen. They know already that I'm as suspicious at them when I ask them to share the screen because that's one of the orientation or the things that I discussed prior to the exam together with the time duration. So I would always inform them that I expect them to be honest, that cheating should not be done, and that I'll be looking at them or observing at them closely. So I tell my students that when I ask you to present your screen, it does not mean to say that I, you are already cheating. I just would want to check something. So they would know already when I would like say, okay, this Juan, you present your screen. So if that student is like starts to do something or like starts to cheat, at least he is aware that I am closely observing him. So, and usually if one student is left, I would ask the student to share his screen. Then after the exam, um, if there are items in the quiz that needs to be manually graded, I grade it right away so that students would also know right away what their scores are. Because we are, um, I'm giving the exam online or synchronously, might as well, they also get or know their scores real time. Okay, so um, those are the four learnings I had last summer. And again, um, I'm honest to say, I thought it was easy. I thought the shift from face-to-face -to, -face to ODL was easy. I was confident enough knowing that I have discussed these concepts in my educational technology class. But to tell you, um, it's a learning experience. So we always have to learn and we should always be open-minded as to these particular changes in the new normal that we have right now. So moving forward, I would like to share these two things that we should always bear in mind whenever we plan and include or like we include our or we plan and then we prepare for our synchronous activities. So moving forward with synchronous delivery, there are only two things that I would want um, to share and for each one of you to always remember diversity and inclusivity. We have to remember that our learners are diverse. We maybe have a student who is, there are three kinds, right? We have um, auditory, we have visual, and the kinesthetic. So we have to remember that each of our students, they have their unique learning style. So we should be able to respect and understand that as a facilitator. And if the inclusivity I'm talking about here, we need to always bear in mind that internet connectivity is a challenge in the country. It might not be that much of a challenge for those students who are in the urban cities, but for those who are located in the rural areas, I know it's really a challenge. Like even here in Negros Oriental, I know that somewhere there in the South, it's really a challenge for them to have a good connectivity. So when I talk about inclusive, inclusivity, we should always do more asynchronous activities so that learning would not be sacrificed. And in case the student's internet connectivity is not that stable, the student will not be left behind. I know my talk is all about synchronous delivery, but my point is it should be more asynchronous activities. And for knowledge deepening, that is where we could include asyn um, synchronous activities. And also everything in moderation. I am, I am also, um, I know of this one because last summer I've been doing online discussion every other day, which should not be the case. So what happened is even if I was doing flip learning, but I was too reliant on doing um, synchronous or including synchronous activity in my classroom. So again, for us to be able to respect diversity and inclusivity with our learners, we always have to do um, or include synchronous activities in moderation. So I think that ends my talk. And that's it. Thank you so much, Ma'am Joy. 
uh, that was, uh, I thank you for sharing your experience and uh, learning with us for uh, my soul synchronous delivery. That was indeed an insightful and meaningful knowledge for us educators. So um, before, before we proceed, I would like to uh, uh, welcome our um, live uh, Facebook participants as well. So this is the fifth uh, sash, uh, series on um, uh, Dr. Mariano Lau webinar on online distance teaching and learning. So our topic for this afternoon is all about synchronous delivery. So we have there uh, Ms. Joy D from um, Silliman University and uh, our next speaker will be uh, Dr. Maria Jane Mascarinias from uh, Bicol University, Open University. So please go ahead, Ms. Um, Dr. Mascarinias. Good afternoon. Is my audio okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, go ahead. And okay. Sorry for the technical problem earlier. And the uh, connectivity issues. These are really challenges to us these days. Given the pandemic, um, actually we have been doing online learning even before the pandemic. But uh, this time, everyone seems to be pressured, forced to do some uh, migration of their classes into online learning. Okay, so can I have the slides now? Okay, my talk is about synchronous learning or delivery. As early on, uh, I think the participants have already the practice on what and how to do synchronous learning and even asynchronous learning as I listened to the first, the second speaker who became first. <laughs> uh, let's proceed. Okay, so when we say learning in the online DE mode, this takes place in different modalities. One is synchronous, another is asynchronous, and the third uh, is said to be blended. Others will call it hybrid or mixed mode learning. Okay, so for this afternoon, it's purely synchronous, but you cannot do away talking about asynchronous, okay? But just to let the participant understand that there are different modalities aside from synchronous, okay? Next slide, please. Okay, when we talk about online learning, take note that it is about student-centered. It's a student-centeredness. Unlike in the traditional mode, which when I say traditional mode or the conventional mode, it is the classroom environment, okay? In the online learning, uh, it's different environment because it is student-centered and there are certain important aspects or criteria that must be present in the online learning. And these are the independence of the learner the self-directed learner, engaging, and anytime, anywhere, okay? When we say anytime, anywhere, it can either be synchronous or asynchronous. So as compared to the traditional mode, where the teacher says it all, 
the teacher directs and provides the, the learning environment and the learning content. In the online learning, it is the student or the learner who takes charge of the learning process guided by the teacher, facilitated by the teacher. Okay, so please take note. When you go into online learning, you have to be independent, engaging, self-directed, and it can be anytime or anywhere. Okay, so wait for a while. Okay, what is really synchronous learning? While you had practice, uh, the discussion on practice earlier, uh, my talk will be quite different from Miss Joy because this is going to be more conceptual, okay? But sometimes it's important to understand the basic concepts, theories behind those practices. And I appreciate the organizer for identifying this and recognizing the basic uh, requirement before going into certain uh, learning modalities, okay. So accordingly, synchronous learning, or I call it SL, is characterized by these different statements. The instructor or the teacher, the students in the course engage with the, engage with the course content and each other at the same time, but there's a big but, they are in different locations, okay. This also requires attendance at scheduled meetings or lectures. Earlier, the emphasis of the speaker was on scheduled, okay? This is one unique characteristic of synchronous learning. Uh, the scheduled meetings, the scheduled lectures, the scheduled quizzes, exams, etc. Similar to traditional classroom, but the term is often applied to online courses or distance learning. This is a general term used to describe forms of education, instruction, and learning that occur at the same time, but not in the same place. Okay. Next slide. Okay, so graphic. if you look at this diagram, uh, synchronous learning is a still between the teacher and the learner, and that there is a two-way communication. The students may be located in different places, but they have the same uh, content being discussed, topics uh, that are scheduled by the teacher. Next slide, please. Okay. Just to show you how it is going on, it can be this picture showing uh, different uh, processes, whether it's video conferencing, tele, by television, or Facebook, even your social media will really play an important part in online courses, okay? Now, SL is commonly applied to various forms of televisual, digital, and online learning, as you have seen that in the pictures earlier, wherein students learn from instructors, colleagues, or peers in real time, but not in person. So again, please take note that when we talk of SL, it simply means that there is a scheduled uh, meetings, chats, or quizzes, or lectures, but not in person, okay? And it is in real time. Next, okay. So again, to emphasize how it's going on, it can be in this way, okay? And this is synchronous, right? Next, okay. You can see that can be via televisual or through your computers. Sometimes uh, 
the teacher will have to record it becomes asynchronous but if it is live just like this webinar that is going on then it becomes synchronous okay next please so what are those things considered as sl or synchronous learning okay i think this has been emphasized by the earlier speaker talking about educational video conferences okay interactive webinars just like this one using certain tools or apps like your zoom or google meet chat based online discussions these are the things that you do in your laptops, in your cell phones, you chat with your teachers, you chat with your classmates, but it's online, okay? Lectures that are broadcast and they, as they are delivered. Next, please. Okay. So just a trivia, did you know that the development and widespread adoption of interactive internet-based technologies Synchronous learning was more commonly called distance education or distance learning. These terms are still used at present, okay? In fact, if you go back to the different literatures, um, one of, you should be able to understand that distance education started way back in the UK and there are certain terms attached to it. So many terms, not just distance education, but sometimes correspondence. Uh, now online, now distance, uh, and then ODL, etc. But at, the, at present, this is still being used. When you say synchronous learning, it's distance education or distance learning. While distance learning took many forms, we often conduct, these are often conducted over radio and later on on certain television systems. Now, when teachers instruct students who are in the same classroom or learning environment, the term becomes in-person learning, okay? So let's take a look at, as I've said earlier, you had a good presentation with Ms. Joy on the actual practice on how synchronous is being done. Again, I would uh, repeat or reiterate that when you say synchronous learning, what are the certain conceptual or theoretical basis of learning? Because it's still learning, whether it is synchronous or asynchronous. Now, what is it that must be in the content of the learning process? How do you address the different needs as mentioned earlier, the diversity of learners. So there are a lot of theoretical basis or concepts out there. Uh, you have the web to browse on all those things, but I just selected this tree uh, purposely for this webinar as we are time limited. Uh, and I, I will try to just briefly introduce them. I know you have that in your other uh, courses probably and the teachers who may be attending this webinar very well know supposedly what are these things but for purposes of discussion and uh, relating the concepts into practice let's have a look at what are these different conceptual basis or theoretical basis of learning okay bloom's taxonomy is very famous among teachers okay and you have to understand that even if the modality is asynchronous or synchronous or blended, you have to understand the learner, okay? And the level or the, yes, the level from basic, high, elementary, high school, tertiary to graduate level will vary according to Bloom's taxonomy, okay? So what could be the content of the learn uh, the learning process according to bloom learning starts from lower order to higher order okay and on this side you will notice that these are list learning competencies 
expected of the learner. Again, I will repeat, whether it is synchronous or asynchronous, you have to take note of this uh, basic theoretical conceptual uh, underpinnings of how the learning process will go on. So it could be at this level, when students would like to memorize or when the topic is about memorization, it's at the lower level. When you try to innovate on something given to you by your teachers or the teachers would require the students to innovate, then you are on the higher order thinking. And these are the competencies um, expected of the learner, okay? Next. Also, let's try to review Edgar Dale's cone of experience. This one is very much related this time for online learning, okay? When you say, when you look at the side, uh, about learning outcomes. These are the things expected. You define, you describe, you explain, okay? But take note that that is only this much percentage. But when you want to demonstrate, apply, or practice, these are the things that must be introduced or that's the processes, the learning processes that must be given to the learners. And that corresponds to a little bit higher percentages in terms of learning, okay? So we're talking about learning activities and learning outcomes. On the other side, again, towards the higher level, you analyze, define, create, and evaluate. That gives you much higher percentage according to Dales, okay? Now, we'll try to see whether that is true to reality or not. I think you can answer that by yourselves. Okay, another one is Kang's theory of instruction. Just to show you that when we talk about instruction, theory of instruction, this is made up of the, these components, taxonomy, conditions, and certain events on instructions. Now I would like to focus here on the nine events of instruction, from gaining attention to enhancing retention and transfer. Next slide, please. Okay. So, sabi kasi nila, theories and frameworks for online education is anchored on Gang's nine events of instruction. Okay? Nakabase dito yung ibang framework for online education. First is you have to gain attention. And this is where media is very much relevant. Okay, so you have your LMS, you have your uh, open uh, online tools and apps, or even the social media, okay? Then you describe the goal, where you provide objectives to the overall course goals. What is the, what is the goal of the learning process? So when you are enrolled in one subject, Immediately, these are the things presented to you by your teachers. You stimulate prior knowledge, okay? Uh, review of previously presented materials, concepts, and connect them to the material to be addressed in the current module. Okay, so you stimulate prior knowledge. Had there been previous experiences, previous knowledge or skills on certain issues or certain topics? Okay, next, you present the material to be learned, and these are in the form of readings, presentations, demonstrations, multimedia, graphics, audio files, animations, etc. This time with technology, you can have uh, all of them, okay? But it requires uh, access and connectivity to the learners. Those are the things that we always have to take we must always have to take in mind when we do the presenta presentation, sorry, because we might have all these things, but the learner may not be able to access. And that is the time we're in. Some will be lagging behind and will not be 
uh, simultaneously joining the other learners. Because remember, this is distance education or online learning. So there are those who may not be at the same pace with the others, okay? Then you also provide guidance for learning. Discussions to enable learners to actively reflect on new information in order to check their knowledge and understanding of the content, okay? Okay, so I think we have to move to the next. Okay, another one, according to Gang, elicit performance. This is where you ask for certain activities, outputs, um, the competencies that the teacher will expect from students through these different activities or performances, okay? There is also provision of feedback. Number seven, according to this jury, immediate, specific, and constructive feedback is provided to the students. Now, that is true to synchronous learning because you can provide immediate, specific, and constructive feedback so that the students will easily learn, easily learn the mistakes or correct the mistakes. You also assess performance, okay? These are in the, term, in the form of test, research project, essay, or presentations, okay? So there are many ways in assessing the performance of students. It can be also in the formative or summative way, okay? Now, the ninth talks about enhanced retention and transfer, which provide opportunities for additional guided practice or projects that might relate learning to other real life activities. Okay, na retain ba yung learning? Uh, kaya niya bang i explain or i transfer? Okay, so from that, from those basic conceptual theories, let's take a look at some examples of synchronous learning in an online setting, of which I know you have already earlier uh, been presented with that practice. Okay, so you have. Kanina, marami sinasabi about scheduled quizzes and tests. This was very much emphasized in the uh, talk of Miss Joy. Scheduled chat room, time for students to share ideas. Scheduled video conferences, and take note, it's all scheduled. Scheduled video conferences or group phone calls. Live stream lectures or demonstration. Live stream, just like what we are doing now. Okay. Now, synchronous may happen on site and remote, okay? I just want to emphasize on this, although this is a comparison between synchronous and asynchronous, we will focus our discussion on the synchronous aspect. If it is same place, that is face-to-face, -face, okay? That's synchronous. The traditional classroom is synchronous. When we say on-site, it's a face-to-face -face interaction, okay? Then if it is in a different place, then that's what you call remote. That's why this time with so many webinars going on, the common byword that you will notice is remote teaching and learning, okay? So with this, you need certain tools, apps, so that you can reach out with the learners uh, remotely because you are in a long distance relationship, LDR, okay? That is the characteristic of uh, synchronous in a remote manner. Okay, next. Okay, this is just to show, I cropped this actually from one webinar because I like the presentation. If it is in a different time, that's asynchronous, okay? If it is on the same time, same place, that's in person, but in a different place, it's online. So the focus actually this time on the direction or landscape of education is on this different place, not in person because uh, of our present situation given this pandemic that we really cannot have face-to-face -face classes or interaction, okay? 
Next. Okay. So what is this? Again, I cropped this in a certain uh, webinar by DICT on the comparison only of asynchronous and synchronous, okay? All these things have been presented earlier. Now let's take a look at the advantages of synchronous learning. One is it's a structured learning, okay? Not just a schedule, but it is a structured. The level of structure is provided. Simultaneous participation is happening. Provide clear guidance on the work to be done. The teacher can provide directions, uh, requirements, instructions, etc. It helps control the pace of learning. So if the teacher would say uh, next week, then it will be next week. Or two days from now, then it will be two days from now. Okay, so there's a controlled pacing of learning. And then learning is kept on track, okay? So that can be monitored by the teacher because it is structured. It also helps avoid situation where some fall behind or struggle. This is what I'm saying earlier, that there are learners who cannot keep pace with the others. There are fast learners and there are moderate learners and there are also uh, late bloomers or laggards, okay? So that is somehow avoided if there is a structured learning and to pace themselves appropriately, okay? So another one advantage of synchronous learning is increased interaction. Well, of course, that is obvious. There is an interaction between the teacher and the student as you have seen in previous uh, slides that I have provided. So in real time, there is an interaction in real time. And this alleviates the sense of isolation that can come from distance learning. Okay, because whether you like it or not, some students really feel that they are isolated if it is distance learning. So others would want still to enroll in residential courses. Okay, but there are pros and cons. And it's up for the learners where to go. Improve students' engagement and self-interest level, okay? So because there's an increased interaction, of course, it will improve students' engagement and self-interest because sometimes learners will need motivation from others, not just from he or uh, from oneself. Another is direct instructions. This is the ability for the teacher to provide some degree of direct instruction. I think that's uh, self-explanatory. Teachers can easily explain concepts to the learners and go into further detail. So it can be furtherly explained, okay? When you say synchronous, the teacher can further explain and mistakes can easily be corrected. And there is a follow-up question. Okay, you may ask again upon uh, answering, upon the, the answering of the teacher. Okay, so you can have a follow-up question. Next. Now, while there are certain advantages of synchronous learning, we cannot do away as part of reality that there are certain challenges. The lack of flexibility, okay? Because it is structured, then the opposite of that is lack of flexibility. This is about single biggest challenge to SL in the inherent lack of flexibility that it provides. This is one biggest challenge in synchronous learning. The learning groups all needs to be present using any telecommunication technology that has been agreed upon. Now, what if not all can afford? Because uh, I think that are that those are some of the issues that uh, beset the migration of regular classes or traditional classes into online learning. Live sessions means the entire group has to engage at set times, okay? That is scheduled. So what if others cannot attend, okay? And what if you cannot meet on common time? So this is not ideal for those who prefer to learn at their own pace, okay? And 
it's also a real challenge for students in different time zones. Now, for example, in my case, I've been teaching in the graduate school. And in distance education, we have uh, students who are offshores around the globe. But of course, these are Filipinos and the most often graduates of our university. But the challenge is really time zone, okay? So when I'm asleep, they are awake. Students being held back, that's another challenge. Learning is set by the teacher rather than by the student. In synchronous, yes, students are held back. Although synchronous learning provides structure, it has the potential to hold certain students back, meaning the entire learning group must progress at the same pace for the live session to make sense, okay? Actually, this was explained earlier in the presentation on the actual practice of synchronous learning. There are certain challenges when it talks about when you present your lessons uh, doing live sessions, okay? Then it's not ideal for students who have a lot of spare time to invest for their learning. There are those who want more time. So hindi papasok yung scheduled and structured characteristic ng synchronous learning. And some would want to push forward faster. Gusto nilang matapos na. Pero hindi pa pwede, sabi ng teacher. So students are being held back. Okay? So... Another challenge is the reliance on technology. Well, I need not explain this further as when we say technology, we talk about connectivity. And when we talk about connectivity, we talk about access, okay? Over-reliance on technology can also potentially be disadvantaged. This is often on synchronous sessions, we'll rely on video conferencing which is reliant on having enough bandwidth and so other schools may not be able to afford it. So sa DepEd, ano ang gagawin nila? More on other modalities like module, okay, correspondence, and assistance from the parents, okay? Connectivity problem poses the problem of missing out important information or live sessions. If you cannot connect, of course, uh, with certain technicalities, this happens, okay? So given this, uh, just final thoughts. Synchronous learning is one of the key methods of delivery in distance education and focuses on involving the entire learning group in real-time learning activities. Okay, it's one, uh, one major modality in delivering education. Now, technology alone will not improve education, but it can be a powerful part of the solution. Okay, that is a very good statement given by the CEO of Google. Next, I think this is my final, final slide. And here are the references for you if you want to browse on those discussions and literatures and learn more of concepts and theories. Okay. And uh, some of those things that I cropped there coming from that webinar. Okay, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, for this webinar and talk about synchronous learning. Thank you so much, Doc Jane, for sharing your knowledge to us. So um, now we have come to our open forum. So for our participants, for uh, Zoom participants, you may chat in your questions in the chat box or uh, the question and uh, answer uh, link over there. And for our Facebook Live participants, you may also type in your comments or questions on the chat box.
So I believe there is already um, those that have raised their hand. So yes, uh, for Zoom participants, you may raise your uh, hand on the on um, the link here so we can call you. So the first one we have Merla Quinones. Yes, ma'am, you may go ahead if you have a question to ask uh, our speakers. You may turn on your audio, please. Ma'am Merla, you're still on mute. Yes, go ahead, Ma'am Merla. Still on mute, ma'am. Anyway, um, while waiting for Ma'am Merla, we have some comments, some Facebook uh, comments for Ma'am Joy. This is from Ma'am Bonior. She said, Thanks, Mom Joy. Very insightful. I like the diversity and exclusivity dimensions of ODL. And she said, I am now I am now reconsidering my plan to make my classes more inclusive, less synchronous sessions. Dagang salamat, Mom Joy. That's from Mom Bonior. And uh, yes, we have one question here from our Zoom participant, um, Myra Luz, Mom Myra Luz. This is for you, Mom Joy. She said, uh, Mom Joy, thank you for sharing. As for online exam, monitoring the class during exam will be very different with only nine students versus having 50. What can you recommend as a strategy to facilitate monitoring during exam with this scenario? Um, regarding this one, Mama, yes, it is really a challenge. So I would like to suggest that you do schedule your students. Now, um, in terms of, because you have to closely monitor your students and that is limited with the available platforms that we have. The more, um, the more students are doing it online, the more smaller the grid is, which would be very difficult on our end to closely monitor them. So, Based on my experience, I think the max should be 10. So if, um, since we are doing, I would like to recommend you incorporate flip learning and micro learning so that you will have more time and you could devote more time to schedule your online exams by grouping your stu students according to 10. I hope that answers the questions, ma'am. Thank you so much, Ram Joy. Uh, Doc Jane, do you have anything to add on that? Oh, there's another question. Um, okay, yes, uh, another question from Mom Joy. Um, from Herbert Corpus, sir. Uh, hi, Miss Joy, thank you for Thank you for your beautiful sharing as regards your experience doing synchronous online learning. What interventions do you, do you do for students who fail to attend a scheduled synchronous online learning? Okay, what interventions do I usually do? So whenever a particular student is not present during our scheduled online um, um, discussion, like for example, it, it could be a quiz, the chat, or especially for video discussion, I would normally follow up them through Messenger. I'm, um, these are the different ways that I follow up on them. I use Messenger because I think most of the students nowadays, they do have a Messenger. I message them through our MySoul because MySoul is also complete. We could message our students individually. I email the student. So I make use of these three ways to, so that the student, to make sure that the student, will, um, I will be able to reach the student. So among the three, to which particular platform the student would reply to me, that is the time that I'm going to share to the student. Like for example, for Big Blue Button discussions, we do have recordings. So I would encourage the student to visit the recording so that the student will not be left behind as to what we have discussed during the discussion. Now, if it's a quiz, of course, I'll give a makeup quiz. 
So it's really very important that right away, we do follow up our students in different modalities so, so that they will not be left behind. Okay. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much for that, Ma'am Joy. So we have another, uh, we have a question here for Dr. Mascarinas. This is from uh, Nemesio Calacas. Uh, so Dr. Mascarinas, thank you for sharing. My question is how can we integrate online delivery when our school chooses modular mode of delivery? Okay, that's a, a very good question. Really, other schools will work on modular approach. Uh, online delivery can be integrated using certain uh, tools such as your Facebook or social media. As the students are very much into mobile phones, this is where you can integrate some of the delivery of courses notices, announcements, etc. that can be done through the mobile phone. Okay. Have I answered? Okay. Have I answered it? <laughs> yes, to we'll the wait one who asked question. <laughs> we'll wait for his reply to that then. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, we have uh, also uh, Mrs. Unisma from our SBE department. Yes, go ahead, Mrs. Ma. You may raise your question now. Kindly unmute, unmute your um, audio. Well, go ahead. I do have a question, but I just I was just agreeing with uh, what uh, Dr. Mascarinia said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, okay. that's okay thank you thank you <laughs> yes yeah, so let me also read from again from our facebook participant ma'am bonior uh, good afternoon may i ask uh, ma'am how we address the concern of varying the time zone of offshore students in relation to synchronous sessions Okay, I think that's addressed to my talk earlier. Yes. Yes. yes, that's true. And that is really happening in our case. Um, that is where you have to shift from synchronous to asynchronous. Okay. Uh, in practice, you cannot really uh, separate the two. It's going to be as earlier explained by Ms. Joy in her presentation. Uh, she kept on discussing also about asynchronous because there are things that can be done synchronously and then are things that can be done asynchronously. Okay, so my pros and cons, my advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot be synchronously uh, meeting your students, then you have to shift into asynchronous. Yes, thank you. So yes, indeed, it has to be a combination of both synchronous and asynchronous. So uh, we have here another question from uh, Sir Jose Vidal. In TESDA, if I recall it correctly, the learner has to learn at his or own pace. I don't know if SL can be linked with the TESDA way of learning. So any one of you can answer this, please? Yes, Mom Joy. <laughs> uh, okay. If the question is that that's the way of learning is learning at your own pace. Yeah. Um, if you talk about learning at your own pace, you have to focus more on asynchronous activity. So as I mentioned a while ago, um, yes, with ODL, we, we do let our students learn at their own pace. But I also emphasize that for um, synchronous delivery, uh, we usually use it too for knowledge deepening with our students. So if it's if the if if you would what you would want to provide to your learners is more self-paced, then um, devote or present or include more asynchronous activities. Yes. Yeah, so 
uh, Sir Jose. Um, I hope Mom Joe was able to answer your question. So you may just chat in your comment uh, with regards to her answer. So um, we have here another question from Sir Herbert Corpus. This is for you, Dr. Jane. He said, hello, Dr. Mascarinas. Thank you for refreshing us of pedagogical theories, which we could use to make online learning or any technology-based learning effective for our students. What do you advise for teachers, especially those who are digital migrants, for them to easily adapt to the new normal educational landscape? Okay. What do you advise for teachers, especially those digital migrants? That's me. For them to easily <laughs> adapt to the new normal. Because whether you like it or not, there are a lot of digital migrants that has to really adapt to the new normal educational landscape, okay? So I think uh, that these digital migrants teachers, for example, has to really unlearn the learning process. Meaning uh, they really have to catch up. It may be gradual, not instant, but, but that would depend on the motivation and the knowledge and skills that the digital migrant had before. So I think that has been answered by so many webinars this time. These webinars are intended to, uh, to let those digital migrants get aware of how they will migrate from classroom to online learning. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Mascarinas. Mom Joy, do you have anything to add to that? Oh, what was it? Uh, you know, if you read uh, on the uh, question, okay. yes. Um, based on our, uh, okay, um, based on, um, it was part of the pool of trainers for the retooling initiatives of the university in preparation for the full online de delivery this coming semester. For the digital migrants, this is what I would like to say per experience. Um, it's more on being open-minded. Whether we like it or not, this is the new normal. And as per my experience with training this digital migrants, um, I would like to commend those trainers that were under me during those trainings. They're very willing and eager to learn, being educators. Because they know that if they are not open-minded, they will not accept the, the new normal. They won't be effective teachers. So it's more on like letting them understand. And another thing is letting them know that technology is not something that we should be scared about. It is something that we could easily adapt and migrate to. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Joy. Yes, and we have, uh, we can still answer one more question here. Another one from Sir Jose Vidal. This is about flip, uh, no micro learning. So he said, good afternoon, everyone. This is about micro learning. If the best experienced trainer or teacher delivers his or her topic in an e-learning class, how good can he or she compress the delivery time so as not to sacrifice the learning of the students? If the usual delivery time is one hour, can the delivery time be compressed to 30 minutes and the compression of the student uh, is still maintained? Has there been a study on this for everyone to determine the baseline of performance with respect to micro learning? Thanks and God bless. Yes, um, Doc Jane? Yes. Yes, it's asking about micro learning. What about? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think micro <laughs> micro learning is uh, addressed to the to Miss Joy. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, regarding that question, micro learning is not really. It's uh, um, I, I don't really get the question. Uh, are you asking <laughs> so we could compress the 
the synchronous delivery to 30 minutes because if you talk about micro learning mm -hmm. we're providing the students chunks of the, the big lesson so um, I'm taking micro learning in relation to synchronous delivery so um, micro learning is one thing that you could do to also um, together with flip learning so that when you're going to meet your students you don't have to spend a lot of time so it's more on knowledge deepening already. So you won't be spending a lot of time. It's more on um, um, asking them if they were really able to get it. So if you talk about, you could compress it. it. It depends on how you structure and how you plan your activities. When I talk about activities, this is both like asynchronous and synchronous. So um, like what Dr. Jane mentioned earlier, um, with synchronous delivery, it's not only scheduled, but it should be structured. So I hope I got your question. Is that what you're trying to ask her? And I hope I answered it. Yes, that is from uh, Sir Jose Vidal. So we will just uh, chat in his comment regarding that answer. So just one last thing. This is a, a note from um, uh, Gina Bonior. She said at Silman University School of Basic Education, particularly at the elementary and junior high school, we encourage that a digital native teacher and a digital migrant teacher who are teaching the same subject collaborate in setting up their virtual classroom. Yes, so this is uh, with regards to the digital migrant. So I uh, guess that is it for this afternoon's session. So uh, before anything else, please, um, oh no, we would like to uh, give this certificate. May we show uh, the certificate please for our speakers? There you go. So Silliman University and Dr. Mariana Lowe Free Computer Education Program presents this, this certificate of recognition to Dr. Maria Jane Mascarinias for sharing her valuable knowledge as a guest speaker during the fifth series of Dr. Mariana Lowe webinars series with the topic synchronous delivery, which was held on the 1st of August 2020 via Zoom online. This is signed by our very own Dr. Dave E. Marshall, project leader, Dr. Mariana Lau ICI Laboratory, and the director of Silliman Online University Learning. Thank you so much, Dr. Mascarinias. And the same citation goes to our uh, second speaker, Assistant Professor Joy MD, thank you so much again for sharing your knowledge to each and every one of us. And uh, before we end this session, please don't forget to um, to answer our uh, webinar forms and uh, for the uh, next Saturday uh, series as well. That's from 2 to 4.30 p.m. we have uh, a synchronous delivery, uh, which will, uh, uh, the speaker will be Dennis, Sir Dennis Berino and Assistant Professor Myla. Yeah, so please don't forget to register. And we also posted the link uh, where you can watch um, today's seminar or series of seminars. So for our uh, survey, we are going to post the link uh, on the chat box or after you uh, sign out from our Zoom, it will automatically be posted and you can uh, click on that one for you to be able to uh, answer our survey for this afternoon. And of course, we will also present you with this certificate of participation for this afternoon's uh, webinar series. So thank you so much for participating and have a good afternoon, everyone.